Today we're going to look at polarization and we're going to start out with what is the use of polarization. So when I'm out and about, I like to wear them sunglasses, polarized. And you know why? Because let's say I'm on the road and I have these annoying white things on my dashboard. Well, thankfully the dashboard is black. And they cause reflections in the windscreen which I don't want. So, how do we get rid of that? We grab our sunglasses, see this reflection here? We put them on. And the reflections are gone. Look, what reflections? Who reflections? Now, it really depends on the orientation, whether your glasses are like this or vertically like this. So, I'm going to rotate and you can kind of observe the effect. So, if they are worn as normal, no reflections. Now, I'm going to rotate it vertically. And look, the reflections are back. Something to do with the orientation of the glasses. But why does the orientation matter? Whether your sunglasses is horizontal or sideways and you cannot see anything. Hmm, I wonder why. So I'm going to put on some sunglasses for you. I'm going to extra pair. Okay, okay, looking good. Hmm, you should get some. Now, what if you have two sunglasses that you're going to wear? Right, I'm going to put on another one on you. Now you can still see me, which is fine. So let's say I put on another pair for you. You can still see me. A little bit darker, but that's fine. What if now I rotate the second pair of sunglasses? So rotate, 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 and Miss Ellie is gone. Rotate it back down and you see me. Now you see me. Now you don't. Well, 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 what do we have here? The secret is, it lies in the physics of electromagnetic waves. So let's go deep dive into why does this happen? How does this happen? And why do the orientation matter? The properties of electromagnetic waves. So in the previous topic, you have seen electromagnetic waves represented like this. You have the magnetic field represented by the red color arrow and the electric field represented by the blue arrow oscillating 90 degree to each other. So this is a 3D model and the plane of E and B is always 90 degree. So they oscillate like that. Long. But what we didn't tell you is this is actually one part of electromagnetic waves because electromagnetic waves is way more than just this. Light travels in random direction, in all direction. So a more accurate representation of electromagnetic wave would look something like this. Wow, teacher, what this? Ah, you have to understand. Your electric field and your magnetic field, this one is just one vector. But there are many, many sources of light. Even if I hold up a light bulb, or maybe I turn on the flashlight of my phone, you will get many, many different electromagnetic waves traveling out in slightly different, slightly out of phase direction. So when we combine all of them together, huh, you'll get something like this. Wow, but this one, how to draw? How to draw? So to simplify this, we will still go back to this one. But it's important to remember that because this direction is everywhere and it's quite random, this is just a combination of two light source. Okay, but they are actually finite light source. So there's many, many different, different, slightly different rotation. And you can kind of get something like this, but not really. So think of this as a simplified version. And now we're going to look at what it means to be unpolarized. Unpolarized light. So naturally occurring electromagnetic radiation. We can call it unpolarized. Okay, so we have the electric field vector represented by the arrows that you saw just now. And also because of this, the magnetic field vector will always vibrate in random directions. Okay, I'm going to put this down here. Oops, should be blue. Random directions. But as usual, because this is transverse wave, okay, random directions, there are many directions. The plane is always right angle to the direction of propagation. So I have here a not so accurate, but kind of can lah drawing. Okay, so this is the direction of uh, propagation in this direction. Okay, so this is direction of propagation. And the wave sort of, sort of just travels and rotate as it spirals outwards. Okay, so generally on paper, right, we're not going to draw this because it confused people are okay. So sometimes uh, we represent it with a symbol like this. Okay. So unpolarized wave, uh, normally in drawing, 
um, probably they will label it, but in case they don't, um, it will be just drawing arrows in this direction. So just to show that this is unpolarized. Okay. Uh, an issue about spelling, because we follow a UK syllabus, so polarized is spelled with an S. S. But UK is to UK. Or polarization. US. You're from UK or US? You follow which convention? Or are you as confused as I am? Because I study UK English, but I read US books. Okay? So I'm going to try to stick to S. But if you see certain Z, this is why. All right? So unpolarized light is that virgin light. It kind of like travels in all different, different directions. And because it travels in different directions, right, it will cause that reflection. Remember the white color receipt reflection on Miss Ellie's car dashboard? Ah, that reflection is because we have light traveling in random directions. Okay, and some of it will in enter into your eyes or in Miss Ellie's case, the camera. So you can see the receipt actually reflects across the uh, glass of the car, which is not a very good thing. Okay, so when it comes to reflection, right, we have this situation where we call partial polarization. Okay, this is a 2D diagram. So you see uh, the many headed arrow, they also don't bother to draw, they just draw up down like that. Okay, so uh, on this side here, you have the incident wave. So this is the unpolarized incident wave. Okay, so when your unpolarized incident wave hits a reflective surface, it could be the glass on your dashboard, it could be the glass in my glasses, in my spectacles. Sometimes you can see the screen reflected off my spectacles, right? Okay, so whenever light comes in to my glasses, right, some of it will reflect on this surface and go into the camera. That's why you can sort of see some glowing screen that is reflecting off my lens. Okay, and also, of course, some of it must enter my eye. Like, if not, I, I see what, right? So some of the light will be reflected and some of the, the light will actually enter the glass and be refracted. Now, refraction is a IGCSE or your previous year year 11 form 5 syllabus, okay? So we're not, we're not going to talk too much about this. I'm just going to label the rays. So on this one, the one that is going in, okay, this is partially polarized, okay? But you may be thinking, teacher, what exactly is partially polarized, refracted, Okay, so to understand what is partially polarized, uh, you this one is light wave, lah, okay? You have to first know what is fully plane polarized. So depending on the type of glass, sometimes when this reflection happens, you will get this scenario where this is plane polarized reflected beam or wave. Okay, so let's go through it one by one. Let's first understand what is partially polarized. Unpolarized means the light wave travel in random, random, many, many directions. Ah, see, see this one? Many, many directions. Plain polarized is when I use something like the lens of a sunglasses, which is called a Polaroid. So this vertical slit is actually known as a Polaroid. Now you might be thinking, teacher, what, what, what exactly is a Polaroid? Well, a Polaroid is something that is made out of many, many long chain molecules. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write that in here. Long chain molecules. Okay, so what does this molecule do? This is the long chain molecule. So if you look at this one here, okay, so we're not going to go into the chemistry part about what makes a polarizer, but what you need to know is that we have chains and chains of molecule in such a way where if the electric field is parallel along the length of the molecule, the molecule will block or absorb the energy from the electric field. To simplify our understanding of electromagnetic radiation, we will only consider one field. And in most cases, our reference is electric field. Doesn't mean that the magnetic field is not there. 
because magnetic field is always 90 degree to the electric field, okay? But considering one is good enough for our consideration today, all right? Simplifying assumptions, all right? So we're going to take the electric field, and if the electric field is oscillating parallel to the molecule, they get blocked. So in this case, there is no transmission, no too little transmission. And if the, remember, the light is traveling in random, random, many, many different directions. If it's perpendicular or if it's not parallel, part of it will pass through. Okay, so it will block all the parallel one and allow some of, allow wherever that is not parallel to pass through. Okay, so the perpendicular component. Nah. We'll look at that later in Mellor's Law. But it's just important for you to understand right now is that a Polaroid consists of a material with a lot of long chain molecule and at certain orientation, the wave cannot pass. Which is why when you look at this case, you can treat this one like a Polaroid. And then there is like a like a vertical slit. Actually, it's just it just means that your molecule chain is like this. Okay, so a long chain molecule, and then if it's parallel to the molecule to this chain, it will get blocked. Perpendicular, it will pass through. So this fully polarized or plane polarized, okay, is when the direction of vibration you see or before it passes through the polaroid hole, it's like vibrating in many many different directions. But when it passes through the polaroid, right, the polaroid kind of forces it to vibrate in one single direction. You cannot see. Now mind, I show you a simulation. Okay, so this is a simulation and you can see first one, we kind of represent the Polaroid as vertical slits, but the molecular chain is actually horizontal. Okay, so right now, this all this random simply anyhow direction, when it passes through this slit, only this one direction will pass through. Okay, so this is what uh, polar, polarizing or plane polarizing means because the wave is traveling on one plane, one plane of your 3D uh, diagram. This means when we define plane polarization, we will say that there is full restriction to the direction of vibration. on a single plane. So one plane only. And in this particular drawing, it's the vertical plane. Okay, whereas partial polarization, this means there is some restriction to the direction of vibration, but not 100%. Okay, so when you think about polaroid, right, or polarization, light on its own will travel in random direction. So they are called unpolarized. So when light is unpolarized, you kind of get the reflection of the receipt across the dash dashboard. What happens when you put on your glasses? I mean your sunglasses. So what the sunglasses does, this is a, you can this polarize is like your sunglasses. So the sunglasses kind of like tell all the wave that's traveling in different, different directions. Like, Hello, you all behave, ah. So behave and only travel in one direction. So the way the sunglasses is designed is such that for any people with the normal head tilt, because you're not going to drive like that, you're not going to drive like this, because just, just, just look at that. You're going to look in front, right? So for someone with a normal head tilt, the wave that passes through, will not. you won't be able to see the reflected wave unless you tilt it differently. Okay? So you can go and try out, find a pair of sunglasses and go and try out see the reflection, uh, see what is partially polarized and what is a plane polarized reflection. So that's why it's plane polarized because I can tilt the lens, right? I can tilt the lens and see that at different different angle, I get the receipt uh, reflection or I don't get the receipt reflection, all right? One more thing about this polarization is that it is a wave property that's associated with transverse wave only. Okay, why transverse wave? Well, this is because transverse wave vibrate in a plane that is 90 degree to the direction of wave travel. 
Okay, so imagine that this is my my hole or my slit or the plane where wave can pass through. The direction of wave energy is here, which is 90 degree to the direction of oscillation. Okay, if let's say it's longitudinal, right, and it's parallel to the direction of energy transfer, then it will just pass through. You can't filter. It's either they don't pass or they all pass. You don't get, uh, and you can't get this kind of like, part of it will pass, but part of it will block. Okay, so this is why longitudinal wave, that is vi where the wave is vibrating parallel along the direction of wave travel. So no matter the orientation or the rotation or how you tilt the slit, the wave will be able to get through. Okay. Because as long as the wave can pass through, the particle can vibrate through because it's parallel. This is perpendicular. So anything that is perpendicular to this one, you have this plane that cannot pass through. All right. So this is polarization. Okay. So in a nutshell, when you have a sunglasses, one sunglasses, what it does is that it changes a polarized electromagnetic wave, a polarized light from vibrating in many, many directions to one single direction. This is called plane polarization. This plane polarization is something that is only transverse wave. Okay, put a Polaroid, the wave will travel in one direction, one plane, full restriction to a single plane, only for transverse wave. Okay, second thing you need to know is sometimes during, we can tell that the reflected wave is plane polarized. If we take a Polaroid, like a sunglasses and put here. And then we rotate the Polaroid. Okay, what happens when you rotate the Polaroid? That will be in the next video. All right, so that's it for this one. It's a very uh, quick introduction. Maybe you haven't think about sunglasses as Polaroid. Maybe it's a bit mind blowing. Wow, electromagnetic wave. I didn't know it's so traveling in all random direction one. Ah, yeah lah. It's random. We don't know. Too many. You can just zig zigzag. Okay, now maybe that one a bit too much. Maybe this direction of wave transfer is going to go in a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Don't know. Okay, but what we can do is we can tame the direction of oscillation using a Polaroid so that light only travels in one direction. And when that happens, we can lessen situations where there's glare or reflection when we don't want to. But do you notice that when Miss Ellie put on the sunglasses on you, and then put on another sunglasses on you and then tilt. And then Miss Ellie just missing. Wow, what happened? Why suddenly no light can pass through at all? I encourage you to think about this. What happens when I put another Polaroid and I rotate it? That will be the next video. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, remember, light is unpolarized until we put a Polaroid and we make the light travel in one direction. Plain polarization. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.